Howdy, folks. This is just a reminder that if you like this content, you can help me out by liking, commenting, and especially by subscribing. And be sure to hit the bell notification so you always get notified whenever I have a new video. Hope you enjoy this. This is kind of like the last one. I know we're, mm -hmm. we got to wrap this up. Um, yeah. The So I wanted to show in uh, 1 Corinthians, it talks about uh, Paul was dealing with some issues. It seemed like there was a, some division in the church. Some people mm -hmm. would say, I follow Apollos because he's a better preacher. I, I follow uh, the apostle Paul. I followed Christ. I follow this and that and that. And he's um, he kind of concludes his arguments with this in chapter four, where he says, who are we? We're just servants of God. Um, and then in verse six, he says, now, brothers and sisters, I have applied these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit so that you may learn from us the meaning of the saying, do not go beyond what is written. Uh, then you will not be puffed up in being a follower of one of us over against the other. So my question is, what do you think uh, do not go beyond what is written means? And do you think this is kind of like a good, is he saying sola scriptura basically? Don't okay. go beyond scripture. By the way, what translation is that you're reading from there? Because it's a little non-literal. It's NIV. Oh, NIV. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, NIV is not the most literal translation. I'll Here, to, no, no, it's, yeah. okay. It, it's okay, you can stay where okay. you were. Okay. Um, I was just going to point out that it, when it translates, so that you may learn from us the meaning of the saying, that would categorize do not go beyond what is written as a saying, but that is not what it says in the Greek. That's an, that's a non-literal way of expressing it. Let me switch it. to hey. ESV so we can see that, because I think you're, I know what you're talking about. Uh, it's coming. Here we go. Okay. That you may learn by us not to go beyond what is written. Yeah, that's a more okay. literal translation of the Greek. So um, there are a few points I'd make about this. The first point is everybody who's a serious scholar agrees this is one of the hardest verses in Paul to interpret. Um, because normally when he refers to a what is written, he's thinking of a specific passage in the Old Testament. And he normally tells us what that passage is, but he does not do that here. And so if you check Protestant academic commentaries from conservative evangelicals, they will say, this is really hard to figure out. We don't know exactly what this means. The best we can do is sketch some possibilities and kind of guess. Um, and then they'll go on to do that. They'll notice, okay, he's talking about him and Apollos and so forth. Um, and preferences between different ministers of Christ. It's possible that what he means by not go beyond what is written is don't go beyond what I've written right here. You know, so I've just been telling you, don't have favorites among the ministers of Christ. Christ is what's important. Don't go beyond that. Or it's possible he has in mind some specific Old Testament passage that he's just not quoting here, and there, and he doesn't want people to go beyond what it says in that passage. He wants people to hold fast to that one passage. Whatever he means here, um, because these are all just guesses, as admitted by Protestant scholars, whatever he means here, it isn't Sola Scriptura. Um, in the first place, you can't build a doctrine on a hard verse. If you don't know what the verse means, then you cannot say with confidence that it supports a particular doctrine. So this is not going to be a good basis for Sola Scriptura, because it's widely admitted we don't know exactly what this means. And if you don't know what it means, you can't say it means Sola Scriptura or anything else in particular. All we can do is, is take guesses. There's a second reason, though which is uh, which which it is a problem for the sola scriptura interpretation of this verse and that is that sola scriptura was not in use in the apostolic age it just wasn't in fact later on in this same epistle in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 Paul commends 
the Corinthians for keeping the traditions about Jesus just as he delivered them to them. So he's not making a, uni- a, sing- a singular appeal to Scripture. He's making, a, at minimum, a double appeal to Scripture and apostolic tradition. And this is something that we see him doing elsewhere in the New Testament as well. Fundamentally, in the, as, as I've argued in various places, the paradigm that was in use in the first century itself was Scripture plus apostolic tradition as interpreted by the church's magisterium, as we see in Acts chapter 15. So that's the paradigm that the apostles expected their followers to use. And so that's what Paul expects the Corinthians to use. Um, And so consequently, whatever 1 Corinthians 4, 6 means, which is widely speculated upon, he's not recommending Sola Scriptura because that's not the paradigm he recommends for people. Uh, on this subject, is it okay if I share another scripture? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to pull it up real fast as I'm thinking about it. Um, mm-hmm. so, um, uh, so in Galatians chapter 1, mm-hmm. um, he's talking about uh, how astonished he is that um, they're so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Mm -hmm. Um, so he's astonished. A lot of people are turning away from the gospel that he preached himself. Um, and in verse eight, he says, but even if we, or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel, contrary to the one we preached to you, let him be accursed. Mm -hmm. Um, and then in chapter two, he goes on to talk about a time where even Peter, the apostle Peter and the followers of James were teaching Jewish believers to Mm -hmm. not come around Gentiles. It's not Um, what he says about Peter or James, but he does refer to this incident at Antioch. Yeah. Well, so yeah, I'll, I'll pull that up too. Uh, It's in the next chapter. Um, Mm -hmm. So I'll pull that up. What is, what is, what is it you want to draw from these passages? So it seems as though he, um, he is saying that, even if we, so like an apostle, like who wrote scripture, mm-hmm. come to you and teach something that's contrary to what's already been given. Um, mm-hmm. And the only way we know what that is, is by looking at scripture, like the New Testament, they're writing. So they've already given us these. So it would seem as if this principle would continue on that um, if Paul didn't even want us to full, fully trust even an apostle, because uh, he goes on to talk about he, how even the apostle Peter erred and the follower of James erred. Yeah, so Peter didn't err in the sense of teaching false doctrine. Peter erred, in Paul's view, in the sense that he was um, acting in a way that was inconsistent with the gospel, but that's different than teaching a false gospel. You can say Peter was wrong, but that's not the same thing as saying, oh, Peter denied the gospel. You know, right, I would of, agree with you that on yeah. that. I'm not saying he denied the gospel. Um, yeah. I am but, saying, though, they what, in, what, it seemed what, like they instituted an unbiblical yeah. practice of... What Paul is saying in Galatians 1 is the gospel is above everything else. So, yeah, if someone, even if it's Peter or Paul, comes along and they're contradicting the gospel, well, then they're wrong and don't believe them. But that is not the same thing as saying sola scriptura, because Paul's gospel was not in scripture. His gospel is an oral message about God has now come and announced his kingdom in the world, and he's overthrowing the power of darkness, the powers of darkness, and he sent his son to redeem us, and so forth. That's the gospel. It's not about, oh, the Mosaic law is going to save us. It's this gospel of God and his son. And it was not written in Scripture yet. So Paul is not articulating a principle of listen to Scripture and only Scripture. He's articulating a principle of of listen to the gospel and don't accept anything that contradicts the gospel. But the gospel was not written in Scripture at this point. So you can't infer that from this. You can't infer Scripture alone from this text. What one could try to do, 
is say, well, this is the, that's the only way we have of knowing the gospel today, so we must listen to Scripture. Well, we do need to listen to Scripture, but if you say this is the only thing we have knowledge of, that we don't have a, um, a knowledge of apostolic tradition, and we don't have a magisterium that's guided by the Holy Spirit, then you're denying things that are in Scripture, like Jesus saying, I'm going gui- to be with you, meaning I'm going to guide you to the end of the world, and the Holy Spirit's going to lead you into all truth. So if you believe Jesus about those matters, then you would have to say the Holy Spirit preserved in the Church a knowledge of apostolic tradition, which I think is can be demonstrated from post-apostolic grounds, and that the Holy Spirit continues to guide the Church today, and we don't have any statement saying, oh, but there's going to be this big shift in the post-apostolic age, which is what you would need if you want to support Sola Scriptura, because Sola Scriptura has to meet its own test. And so if there's going to be a paradigm shift in how Christians are supposed to develop their doctrine in the post-apostolic age, then you're going to need Scripture to teach that. And if Scripture doesn't teach it, then it is self-falsifying, and we need to fall back on the promises of Christ to, to guide the Church with his with himself and his Holy Spirit. Would Are Catholics allowed to—I've heard of this principle. I've heard some—like, I think Matt Fradd has talked about the term prima scriptura. Yeah, are, Scripture have, first. Yeah, so are you allowed as a Catholic to say— so scripture obviously teaches there's a magisterium, there is apostolic tradition, and they're essential. Like we need to hold to them. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, scripture is is first. Is above. Oh yeah. Like you're, if you, that's actually that's church teaching. Um is that scripture is first. Now, it, it apostolic tradition, if it's genuinely apostolic is not going to contradict scripture. But um, if, if it does, then it's not genuinely apostolic. So there's not going to be a contradiction between Scripture and apostolic tradition any more than there's going to be a contradiction between Matthew and Mark. Um, but Scripture is first. It is inspired in a way by God himself, such that God is the auth- primary author of the language that Scripture uses, whereas apostolic tradition conveys ideas, but it, the language used to convey them can change. So Scripture has a priority over apostolic tradition, and both Scripture and apostolic tradition have a priority over the magisterium, which is just the interpreter of Scripture and tradition. So even though prima scriptura is kind of a recent phrase that has been used by some, it actually describes the teaching of the Church as represented in the Second Vatican Council document, Dei Verbum, on the Word of God. Okay, so I think this is super helpful to know, Mm -hmm. because uh, I almost, if that's allowed by Catholics to believe the idea of prima scriptura, Mm -hmm. I think a lot of Protestants basically mean that when they Mm -hmm. say sola scriptura. I think a lot of times when we say sola scriptura, it does mean scripture alone, um, Mm -hmm. but... I, I agree that I, I've i come to see how dangerous that can be uh, if you don't ever look back to tradition. Like you can you can come up with some really weird, strange theology um, and it can give birth to things like Jehovah's Witnesses and mm-hmm. things like that. Um, and one is Pentecostalism and things like that. Um, so like I do see, I do think tradition is essential and i think we should be looking back to make sure if i'm come if i have a new idea from reading the bible should has anyone ever believed this Mm -hmm. (laughs) in the past ever and if not it's i'm probably misunderstanding something Mm -hmm. like for me personally i'll be honest like i went i struggled with the trinity for a time because i read Mm -hmm. uh scriptures and i didn't fully understand it and i think a lot of it was just i wasn't explained it properly Mm -hmm. um yeah. But then I went back and started looking at what why people believed in the Trinity and how they explained it, and that helped me not become a heretic. You know? mm-hmm. um, Good. Yeah. So, so you are saying as a Catholic, uh, what you're meaning is we're we're just meaning not Scripture alone. We're saying mm-hmm. the magist the tradition, apostolic tradition. 
and the magisterium is still essential, even mm -hmm. though scripture is first. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, that's super good to know. And before we go, just one more reminder that if you like what you've watched, you can help me out by liking, commenting, and especially by subscribing. I'm trying to grow my channel, and I'd really appreciate your help. Thank you, and God bless you.